Joseph Henry Sharp was born in Bridgeport, Ohio on September 27th of 1859 to Irish parents who were merchants. From his earliest days, Sharp was fascinated by anything he could learn about American Indians. The young Joseph Henry Sharp interests include drawing, fishing, and swimming, the latter of which almost killed him as he nearly drowned and damaged his hearing, eventually leaving him completely deaf. At this early age, Sharp's indomitable spirit was already manifested as he never for a moment let his handicap hold him back. He learned to read lips and began to carry a pad and pencil with him whenever he went, never once losing his optimistic outlook on life. It was around this time he began to realize that he had a natural facility for drawing and he sketched often in the outdoors. When Sharp was 12, his father died, leaving the family with almost no income. Sharp went to work in a nail mill and copper shop, giving his earnings to his mother. And at age 14, he worked and supported himself entirely still sending money to his mother and managed to have enough to enroll in art classes at Mickamick University in Cincinnati. In the late 19th century, studying in Europe was still considered compulsory for any aspiring artist. And after eight years of working and studying when he could, Sharp saved enough extra money to travel to Europe and spent two years at Antwerp Academy studying in the realistic tradition, history, painting, and portraiture. Sharp's first trip to the West was in 1883 at age 24. He visited Pueblos in New Mexico and the cities of Santa Fe, Albuquerque, and Tucson. And he took a boat up to the West Coast and disembarked in the Washington Territory. In the Northwest, he encountered natives from numerous tribes, and the sketches he did on that trip would be the basis for his first Native American portraits. His love of the West notwithstanding, Sharp seemed to feel his studies were never really over, and again set off to Europe. He went to Germany, Italy, but spent most of his time in Spain studying the Spanish masters El Greco and Goya. Back in Cincinnati, Sharp married in 1892, and he finally visited Taos for the first time in 1893 on a commission from Harper's Weekly. He was captivated by the unspoiled life of the natives in Taos. The pictures he completed for the commission were very well received and led to further illustrations, work, and numerous publication. In spite of this success, Sharp still felt that his education was incomplete, and he went to Paris for two years of further study. It was in this class in Paris that he first met Bert Phillips and Ernest Blumenschein. He regaled his new friends with stories of the West and showed them several of his drawings. Sharp's words and pictures worked a spell on the pair, and they became determined to make their own trip west, which they would do in 1898. He also met E.I. Kaus in Paris, and he had a stimulating effect on the young painter as well. However, when Sharp returned to the U.S., he did not go back to the Pueblos of New Mexico right away. He taught in Cincinnati, worked as an illustrator, and spent time in Montana, camping on the battlefields of Little Bighorn. He became acquainted and painted portraits of Plains Indians, and in 1900, an exhibition of these portraits would travel to Paris and to Washington, D.C., and would prove to be a turning point in his career. The Smithsonian Institute purchased 11 portraits, and President Roosevelt took an interest in Sharp's work. Roosevelt had the Indian Commission build and finish a cabin and studio for Sharp. Sharp had it constructed at the Little Bighorn at the intersection of two rivers. Two years later, Phoebe Hearst, mother of William Randolph Hearst, bought 80 paintings from Sharp all at once. Suddenly, Sharp was financially independent. While working in Montana, Sharp began amassing a huge personal collection of Native American artifacts and costumes. It was important to him that these things be preserved and understood, and that he was closely connected to and had a thorough understanding of the subject matter. He even made sure that he got to know all of his portrait subjects personally. And in this way, he was much as an anthropologist as a painter. Once he was independent and could paint freely, Sharp's output was enormous. He sometimes completed hundreds of paintings in a single year. The Northern Plains Indians remained the focus of his efforts for a long time. Sharp felt that his attention belonged there rather than at the Pueblos because he saw the Plains Indians and their way of life dwindling much faster. He knew that Taos would still be there in 10 years. Sharp began to spend some summers in New Mexico and in 1909 purchased an old Penitente chapel to use as a studio. In 1912, Sharp finally relocated to Taos permanently and was a charter member of the Taos Society of Artists, which formed in 1915. He worked and exhibited with the group for many years and by all accounts was widely loved and respected. He had a reputation as being friendly, witty, and patient. Sharp threw himself into recording the environment and life of the Pueblo. He generally sketched outdoors and completed paintings in a studio. 
He continued to enjoy critical as well as financial success, which allowed him to continue his already extensive travels. Sharp was known for his paintings of flowers that often were arranged in large, beautiful Pueblo pots. Sharp also spent several winters in Hawaii before World War II, where he painted numerous paintings, many of them waves crashing on the beach. In 1949, the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa, Oklahoma, mounted a retrospective of Sharp's paintings and still holds the largest collection in the world of the artist's work. At age 93, Joseph Henry Sharp closed his studio in Taos. He intended to return the following year, but fell ill and died in August of 1953 in Pasadena, California. He left behind thousands of paintings and an unparalleled visual record of the Native American. Joseph Henry Sharp is widely considered to be the spiritual father of the Taos Society of Artists. He was the first painter to visit New Mexico before Phillips and Blumenshine made their historic wagon trip. He left behind a vast cultural record of Native American life, landscapes, and portraiture. His work is often referred to as poetic and is steeped in deep nostalgia that he felt all his life for the vanishing culture of the American Indian and the Old West.